What's the word, y'all? The Boston Celtics are one game away from being the 23-24 to 24 NBA champions. Game three wasn't pretty for either side. Uh, even though there wasn't time in the third quarter where both Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum were phenomenal. And I think that the Boston Celtics got their lead up to a, a, as high as 22. And then in my notes, um, with 10 minutes and 30 seconds left, in this game, when it was a 20-point lead, the Dallas Mavericks won in a 20-2 run. And then now I'm looking at this game like, no way. No way the Boston Celtics is going to blow this game and make this very interesting. As we know, you know the numbers. No team has ever come back 3-0, whether it be the first round, second round, conference finals, or the finals. So, so history says this is wraps. And <laughs> history says it was wraps. And during that 20-2 run, I was thinking to myself that if they blow this game, it is anybody serious. But they didn't. Um, they got a Jalen Brown mid-range pull-up jump shot in isolation. They got a cut for Jason Tatum for a dunk. And nonetheless, they put it all together and they got this win. Uh, final score is 106-99. to This is the third straight game. All three games of the NBA Finals, the Dallas Mavericks failed to hit 100 points. And in the regular season, they did that 12 total times. And they got it three times in this one series alone. Again, I think the, the main story about the Boston Celtics shouldn't be the amount of three-point shots they get up. It shouldn't be about this. It shouldn't be about that. It should really just be about their defense because they have just been put in a stranglehold on the Dallas Mavericks this entire series. And this is just what they did. And I was a a little bit skeptical about it because in the last series versus the Pacers there were some really really high scoring games where I was a little bit worried about the Celtics defense and I had to remind myself that these guys have a, as many def Luka defenders Kyrie defenders as any team in basketball where they legitimately have four guys that can guard both of these dudes at least give them problems make it tough and no other team in basketball really had that and we continue to see it now this is this is the moment of time where I got to get some tough love to my guy Luka Doncic Luka Doncic is, is in this elite class of player. We talk in top tier, best of all time type tier, where no matter what their stat line says, if you were just a box score watcher, it would look like they had a great game. Luka today, 27, 6 to 6, 40% from the field, right? Um, he's in an elite class like Nikola Jokic. It's very rare that you can see a box score where Nikola Jokic looks like he had a bad game. But there are games, of course, just like everybody, where it was a bad game. LeBron James, at least in his prime. I guess you still kind of see that to this day. But in his prime, there are plenty of times where LeBron James ended the game with 37-7. and seven, And I walked away like that wasn't the most... That wasn't the greatest performance from LeBron James. That was one of that was kind of a lackluster one. And that's kind of the way I feel about Luka Doncic in this one. Again, this is tough love. I love Luka Doncic. He's one of my favorite players to watch. But this one, he felt like he reverted back to the Luka Doncic that we were critical of early in this playoffs. Where it was like, brother, first round. You remember the first round of the playoffs where all the conversation wasn't about the Dallas Mavericks winning the first round. It was like, man... Luka Doncic cannot stop complaining to the referees. Referees, And granted, this was not a well-whistled uh, game. It just wasn't. There were times where I felt like it was consistent and they were letting these boys play. There were some times when Luka Doncic got to the basket and he drew some contact and that wasn't a whistle. There was a fast break dunk where Jason Tatum got fouled. Objectively, he got fouled and they didn't blow the whistle. So in my mind, okay, they're going to let him play. I, I agree that this was not the greatest whistle. But at some point... You have to just go out and hoop. And I thought we had turned the corner on that. Remember? Second round of the playoffs after game number two. Luka Doncic in game number three did not talk to the refs at all. Regardless of whether or not he thought he was fouled. He thought it was a bad whistle. He didn't complain one bit. Purely hoops. And we saw that again in the, a little bit in the last series. He did kind of revert back to his left. But this was one of them games where, again, I understand you weren't getting the whistle that you wanted, right? You, there were some times where you definitely deserved a whistle. But if you recognize that you're not getting that, there is nothing that can play until the referees can really do. There was one possession in the third quarter that I remember, remember very vividly where Luka Doncic, or, or, or Luka Doncic shot a three. He thought he was fouled. It was actually back-to-back -back possessions where he shot a three and he ended up on the ground. Was he fouled? Was he not? That's not for me to decide. That was the referees and everybody else. Um... But instead of getting up and hustling back on defense, he sat there, he talked to the referees, and it ended in an easy bucket for the Boston Celtics. And in a game like this, where it is a seven-point game, and a lot of that was free throws, I mean, at one point they were down to three. It was, it was 93 to 90 at one point when P.J. Washington double-clutched a three-point shot when he was wide open. I don't know why he did that. Possessions like that matter. And, and one thing that I, I, remember, um, I remember Kobe saying, when you get to the finals, you remember Cole, Cole got a lot of finals experience. You have to recognize that every single possession could matter. You hear it all the time in basketball. You hear it all the time everywhere. Every pitch matters. Everything matters. 
No, but in the finals, that's legitimately the case. And there are not a lot of people that can realize that in real time, right? There's nobody that's literally playing every single possession to their, their fullest potential, going 100% every single possession. That's unrealistic. But at times like this, you got to keep that in the back of your mind. And the fact that he fouled out, let's be real. I, want, I need to go back. The footage ain't, ain't live to shout. I want to go back and watch all six of his fouls. I counted three myself that were completely, completely avoidable. One was just him putting his hand in a cookie jar to stop. It wasn't even a fast break. It wasn't even a fast break. He put a hand in the cookie jar. I think that was his first foul. And little did he know that with, with three minutes left in the game, that first foul was going to come back to bite him. There are a few times where he tried to stop a fast break by putting his body in front of somebody, but he's not set. And that was the sixth foul as well. So in a game like this, and, and shout out to the, to the Mavericks, they got a couple easy baskets after he fouled out to make it feel like it was still interesting. But as a neutral fan, I want to see Luka Doncic on the court for those last couple minutes. I saw the game winner in Minnesota. I saw the game winner against the Clippers in the bubble. I want Luka Doncic on the floor when it matters as a neutral fan. We didn't get that, and that was him. That, that was him not playing the discipline level of basketball that we want to see from him. And I'm trying to figure out where, where I really sit on all of this. I'm trying to figure out where I really sit on it because there's no surprise. This man is getting injections to stop the pain. He's got a knee thing. He's got an ankle thing. He is as beat up as anybody in this entire finals. So I kind of want to give him a little bit of wiggle room on the fact that his defense has been ridiculously bad all series long. But then again, this is the finals. This is the finals. So I don't, I don't know why I land. I don't know why I land. But you watch these games. It has been just bad. The Celtics have made it a point to put him in as many actions as possible. And in one-on-one defense for the majority of this playoff run. And that's why I feel like this is more injury related than anything. Because in OKC, I thought he had so many possessions where he really sat in that chair. And he, he really uh, played good defense. Uh, same thing in that last series. But there, there are so many possessions in one-on-one -on -one defense where he just is allowing a man to get past him. Okay, my lateral quick is not what it needs to be. I have an ankle thing, I have a knee thing, whatever. But in this game, I thought his, his defense in space, his help defense, all of that, it, would ju it just regressed to like really, really, really bad. Same thing with Kyrie. Now, these are the only two team guys on the, on the team that are doing anything offensively for you, too. So you can also play that car like Kenny. These guys are exerting so much energy on the offense side of the ball. Again, I understand that as a talking point as well. But I, I just remember the play where uh, Jalen Brown got an open three in the corner because Kyrie Irving lost the ball while he was in gap. It's just too many things like that. And when you are struggling to score the ball, when you are struggling to uh, touch triple digits in the game, those possessions are, again, going to matter more. So with Luka being 25 years old, remember this guy, this, this kid is only 25 years old. I can say it because I'm older than him. This, this kid is 25 years old. And when, when you get to this level, this early in your career, Right, because let's this series is most likely it's ninety nine point nine percent over. I'm giving them a, a small of a percent of the percentage to make it happen, but I ain't I ain't like the things I've seen so far. When you get to this level and you get to the finals, that first finals is tough. Not many people that are leading the team at twenty five years old, if any, if any. I mean, I, I guess Magic Johnson, and let's say in the current era. Not many people are able to lead a team to the finals at 25 years old and win it. But all of those guys that on top of my mind have done it, like LeBron James, let's let's because the LeBron James parallel with Luka Doncic just gets scarier and scarier by the day. By the age of 25, I think he's also had five All NBA appearances. He's also had two MVPs. Luka's got zero, but he's been in conversations for him all the time. Um, 2007, right? That was that was Bron's first year in the finals. He was about 25 years old as well. It didn't go well for him. It wasn't a long series. Hell, it wasn't even really a productive series by LeBron James' standards. But it was his first time there. And he learned a lot for the next time. And then the next time. Well, and then he realized that, like, I should get some better teammates. In. <laughs> I should get some better teammates. That's not something Luka's going to do. Um, but it is, a, it is a learning process when you're a 25-year-old guy. And because Luka Doncic is as good as he is, I thought they had a chance in the series, right? I, again, 
The moment the Celtics acquired Drew Holiday, I said on our podcast, that is the team I am picking to win the finals. And I've never, I've never switched up. But in this, I, I didn't think it was a 100% Celtics win. I thought this would be a more competitive series. And yeah, some of these games have gone down to the last couple possessions. So it has been competitive. Um, but when you're a 25-year-old superstar, you're dealing with all of these injuries. It's a learning process. And I think the next step for Luka Doncic is, is recognizing that, that other part of basketball, the other side of the ball, and, and just hitting a next level there. Because there are some players that we've seen who have had the, the title of bad defensive players as a superstar, and they completely rewrote history to get rid of those titles. Steph Curry at one point was known as a bad defender. The reality is, it's not a bad defender. And his championship runs, he was just the worst defender on the court because they have Klay Thompson, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, you know, and Iggy. Like, yeah, you're going to pick on the 6'2 point guard, even though he's not a bad defender. Um, Nikola Jokic, for the big portion of his career, he was known as a bad defender. But over the last three or so seasons, he has switched that with his fast hands and his good decision making. Luka Doncic already has some really good fast hands. It's just a matter of the decision making. And with him being... Him being a guard, it is a little bit tougher, right? Because other teams are going to try to make him work a little bit more than what other teams make Jokic work. But still, that's the next evolution of Luka Doncic. The offensive side of the ball, bro, there's not many in the world that are better. If it, it might be one. It might be one offensive player in the world that is better than Luka Doncic. You can argue that there is zero, and I won't even be mad at you. So it's about that next side of things. And um, I, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, planning a funeral just yet. I'm opening. The, I'm leaving the door open, uh, but it feels like that's the. Oh, forget that. Forget all of that. Whatever I was talking about. Way, way too much Tim Hardaway Jr. today, and I'm not a fan of this team. I don't care who wins. I understand playing Tim Hardaway Jr. I, you 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 tested in the in game number one. I think he played seven minutes, right? Tim Hardaway Jr., we were talking about a team like the Dallas Mavericks that don't get nearly as many threes up as the Boston Celtics. It makes sense for you to play a guy like Tim Hardaway Jr. who can hit four threes in a quarter and change the whole landscape of the game. Again, I understand that. But in that seven-minute stretch of game number one, you realize that he's not really that. I don't think he played in game number two. So the fact that he went from zero minutes to 19 minutes, again, through the last three of these minutes is when uh, Luka Doncic fouled out. So let's say it was real, roughly 15 to 16 real minutes. I can't take it. I can't take it anymore. I can't take Maxi Kleber minutes. Every single second Maxi Kleber was on the floor, I, I, I was pulling my hair out as well. He is he is in his own mind. He's in his own head. I know his shoulder hurts when he shoots the ball, but hell, he's struggling catching the ball at this point. I, I can't see any minutes from him in this in next game. I just can't. I just can't. I can't. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> and I'm speaking as a neutral. I can't even imagine what Mavericks fans feel about Maxi Kleber right now. Um, but again, in game number three, this has been the case for the entire series. Um, Missoula Ball has been working. They've been winning the numbers game. 46 three-pointers attempted, 17 makes. That's a 37% clip, which is 4% less than their season average. But still, you make 17 threes while the Boston Celtics make, uh, the uh, Mavericks make nine. It's hard to win a basketball game when you're losing. You're starting off every game losing by 8, 16, uh, uh, six, uh, 24 points. You lost the three-point battle by 24 points, and that has been the story for game number one and game number two, and continues to be the case in game number three. Now, the Celtics have just done a damn good job of preventing you from hitting or attempting threes, so I don't even know what you do if you're the, the Dallas Mavericks. You have a statistical solid game from Luka, you have the best Kyrie Irving game of the series, and you you still don't pull it out. Um, it's been a good ride. It's been a good ride, but the Seas are probably going to be champions in a couple days.